إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار Brothers and sisters in Islam, the title of our khutbah today is Ash-Shuhada, the martyrs. And in this khutbah, inshallah, we're going to understand who is the shaheed and what kinds of death constitute martyrdom or shahada and what is the big deal or the virtue of being a shaheed and what kind of rewards and advantages do they have on the day of judgment. And then in the second khutbah, we we'll look at how you can attain shahada and we'll look at the proper terminology regarding the shuhada. But the question is, why explain all this? Like, why is this the topic of the khutbah? The main or perhaps the only reason is just to bring ease to our hearts. Knowing the great blessings the people of Palestine and the people of Gaza are receiving bi'idhnillah. Because if we only see their suffering and the murder in this world without taking into consideration the akhirah, without taking the next life into account, then your pain will only increase. But when you consider the reward of the shuhada, not only does it bring ease to your heart, but you yourself will also desire a level from the levels of martyrdom that we're going to mention in the khutbah. But it's important to say this, that this khutbah is not to encourage people to go out for jihad. That's not the purpose of the khutbah to encourage young men to go out for jihad. And this is not out of fear of any government or any entity. But what happens is people, and especially the youth, when they hear about the greatness of martyrdom, they want to go out and to attain it without knowing any of its guidelines. And so they end up doing things that are outright haram, or harming civilians, or harming the innocent, or leaving without their parents' permission, or joining the wrong group, and the list goes on and on and on. So this khutbah is about bringing ease to our heart, knowing what, inshallah, the people of Palestine are experiencing, and that they're bi'idhnillah shuhada with Allah Azza wa Jal. So the first thing is, why this name? Why was the martyr called a shaheed? And shaheed, shahida, yashhadu, which is someone who witness, witnesses or testifies or, or experiences something. And Imam al nawawi and other scholars gave a list of different possible wisdoms behind them being named shuhada or being a person being named a shaheed. And they said, because Allah and the angels yashhadun lahu bil jannah. Because Allah and the angels bear witness and testify for them that they're going to al jannah. And that's why they were named the shaheed. Or the other explanation, لِأَنَّهُ حَيٌّ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِ Because it's فَكَأَنَّ رُوحَهُ شَاهِدًا أَيْ حَاضِرًا So because they're still alive with their Lord, so it's as if they're Ruh, their soul, is present, shahida, present still, because he's not dead, just killed. The other explanation says, because when they are killed, yashhadu, he witnesses, ma u'idda lahu min karama. They get to witness what was prepared for them, and they get to witness what was prepared for them in al-jannah. So that's why it's called the shaheed, because he gets to witness his place in al-jannah. Likewise, other explanations say, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala testifies, يَشْهَدُ لَهُ بِحُسْنِ نِيَّتِهِ وَإِخْلَاصِهِ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala testifies for them that they had 
good intention and they had sincerity. And other explanations amongst them that the uh, that people testify for them لَهُ بِالْإِيمَانِ well, uh, with the good end and with having iman because based on his apparent situation and based on his external situation. Other explanations because he has a witness لأنه له شاهد بقتله he has a, a witness uh, not a witness here it means an evidence or a proof that he was killed. What is the proof? His blood because he's also buried in his clothing with his blood without washing so that comes as the proof the evidence that he was killed for the sake of Allah that's his shahid and that's why it's called the shaheed or another explanation because his soul sees tashhadu tushahidu witnesses and sees dar salam ay al jannah because his soul goes straight into Jannah and experiences and gets to see Al-Jannah, while other souls don't get to experience that. And the, uh, and the final explanation, then there are many others actually, but the truth is, whichever definition you look at, you see that the Shahada is actually something great, something great. So, there are many levels of achieving Shahada and martyrdom. And the greatest one is the one who dies in battle. So what are the virtues of the shaheed? In Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah Azawajal says, وَلَا تَقُولُوا لِمَا يُقْتَلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ أَمْوَاتٌ بَلْ أَحْيَاءٌ وَلَكِنْ لَا تَشْعُرُونَ And do not say about those who are killed in the way of Allah that they are dead. Rather, they are alive, but you do not perceive it. They are alive, but you are not able to perceive that. In Surah Al-Imran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تَحْسَبَنَّ الَّذِينَ قُتِلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ أَمْوَاتًا بَلْ أَحْيَاءٌ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ يُرْزَقُونَ And do not think that those who have been killed in the cause of Allah are dead. And this always says killed, but they didn't die. They were only killed in this world, but they're alive. Rather, they're alive with their Lord, receiving provision. They're يُرْزَقُونَ Receiving provision from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Sahih Muslim, Masruq said, I asked Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, the companion, about this verse. And he said, we also asked about that verse. And we asked the Prophet ﷺ. And the Prophet ﷺ described, so how, where are their souls? How do they witness? How do they receive provision? He said, their souls are in the crops, yani the bellies of green birds, which have lamps hanging underneath the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they roam freely wherever they want in paradise. And then they return to these lamps. Then their Lord looks down upon them and says, Do you desire anything to the souls of the shuhada in the bellies in these birds that would rest in these lanterns hanging from underneath the throne of Allah Azza wa So Allah Azza wa will ask them, Do you desire anything? And they said, What could we desire when we can roam freely wherever we want in paradise? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked them three times, Do you want anything? Is there anything that you want? And then the Prophet said, and then when they realized that they would not be left without being asked, and you have to give an answer, they said, Our Lord, we want to re you to restore our souls to our bodies so that we be may be killed for your sake again. طيب. What's the big deal here? And you understand that sakaratul maut, the pangs of death, experiencing death, this is something that is difficult. This is something that is difficult. Even the righteous suffered and had difficulty when their soul was leaving. And can you imagine that there will be individuals who would wish to go back to earth to die again? So, and the hadith ends when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he saw that they had no need, they were left alone after that. In another hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, the Prophet sallallahu said, there is no one that enters al-Jannah that wants to go back to earth and, and have nothing to own on earth. Yeah, and nobody goes into a Jannah and wants to come back to earth as a, as with nothing, no possession, not owning anything, not having any wealth. It then, except, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, إِلَّا الشَّهِيد Except for the shaheed. يَتَمَنَّا أَن يَرْجِعَ إِلَى الدُّنْيَا He wishes to return to the dunya. فَيُقْتَلَ عَشْرَ مَرَّاتٍ لِمَا يَرَى مِنَ الْكَرَامَةِ 
he wants to come back to earth and be killed 10 times over because of what he saw from the graces and the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imam Ahmad also narrates another hadith where the Prophet sallallahu said, the soul of the believer is a bird that perches in the trees of paradise until Allah, may he be blessed and exalted, restores its body, restores it to its body on the day of resurrection. And then another hadith says, the martyrs are on the banks of a river at the gate of paradise in a green tent. And their provision comes to, out to them from paradise in the morning and in the evening. So we've got the ones that their souls are in the bellies of green birds that perch in these lanterns under the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We've got the ones that the, the, the martyrs are on the banks of rivers at the gates of paradise in this tent. And we have the other hadith describing that the souls of the martyrs are birds that perch in the trees of Al-Jannah. So some scholars tried to reconcile between all these other narrations and some scholars said that you will find different rewards for them for their souls in Al-Jannah because they were at different levels. So not all the martyrs are the same. They vary based on their courage in the battlefield, whether they were in the front lines or the back lines, whether they were very sincere or slightly sincere or not sincere at all. And that's how some of the scholars reconciled the different hadith describing different blessings for the souls of the shuhada in al-Jannah. In Surah An-Nisa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَن يُطْعِ اللَّهَ وَالرَّسُولِ فَأُولَٰئِكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ وَالصِّدِّقِينَ وَالشُّهَدَاءِ وَالصَّالِحِينَ وَحَسُنَ أُولَٰئِكَ رَفِيقًا Whoever obeys Allah and His Messenger, then they will be with those whom Allah has bestowed his blessings and his grace upon from the prophets and then the Siddiqun, those who follow the prophets who were the first and foremost to believe in the prophets and then the shuhada. And we're mentioning the verse to show you that the shuhada are at this extremely high level with the prophets and with the Siddiqun. And the scholar said that being with them does not make them equal to the prophets. But it means that they will share either some of the levels of paradise or they will share some of the blessings along with or they will be along with them. But it doesn't make them equal to prophets in case anyone is confused about that. And there are many hadiths similar to that. But it doesn't mean that they're at the level of a prophet, equal to a prophet. But they could be sharing the same level of Jannah as those high ranking individuals. So, one of the favors that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestows upon his servants is that he will also cause their children and their wives to come and join them at their high level in Al-Jannah. And it was reported in this hadith by Al-Miqdam ibn Ma'di Yakrib or Ma'di Yakrib that the Prophet sallallahu said, Inna lishshaheed that the martyr with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gets seven blessings. And it's when does he get these seven blessings? He says, meaning from the first drop of blood, every sin they committed in their life is forgiven, not from the last. From the first drop of blood that falls off of their body, every sin they've ever committed in their life is forgiven immediately. So this is the first of the seven blessings. Then the Prophet ﷺ says, then he will be, second one, he will see his place in Al-Jannah. Immediately he gets to see his place, his palace in paradise. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect them from the questioning of the graves, not min fitnat al-qabr, from the trial of the grave, the questioning, the punishment, the test in the grave, they don't get to experience that, and that was the third. And then he will be caused to feel safety and security on the day of judgment. How many times in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the fear that people will experience on that day, and how their eyes will be looking down in fear 
خاشعة أبصارهم أبصارها خاشعة Allah as well is describing this day and how difficult it is but there will be people and they are the martyrs who will not be experiencing any fear and they will be safe from the fear of that day so every one of these so far has been magnificent then the Prophet says then they will be given a crown it will be put on their head and then he describes وسلم, that one of the jewels on this crown is better than the whole world and everything that's in it and and then of the last two we wuzawwaj and he is given in marriage to or or they give him in marriage 72 from the women of al jannah and he is allowed to intercede for 70 of his family members this is in one hadith seven blessings that the martyr gets and because of that we see that it's a big deal to die as a shaheed and because it's such a big deal it's not up to you to die a shaheed it's a blessing and from the graces of Allah and that's why Allah Azza says in the Quran minkum shuhada. and he chooses shuhada from amongst you is a great blessing that not everybody has the honor to become one of the shuhada so but there are other ways and other levels of becoming a shaheed in Sunan Abu Dawood also mentioned by Nisa'i and Imam Ahmad rahimahumullah Jabir ibn Atik he says the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said ma ta'udduna ash-shahada what do you regard as martyrdom so they said al-qital fi sabil Allah fi sabil Allah ta'ala fighting for the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said that martyrdom is seven things besides being killed in the battlefield, besides being killed for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. So he mentioned al matun shaheed. al matun hina doesn't mean stabbed as we understand it today in Arabic. al matun yani the one who dies from a ta'un, who dies from the plague. And the scholars made a qiyas. They said anyone who dies from anything similar to that. They mentioned tuberculosis. They mentioned even covid based on what kind of complication killed them as a result of COVID. But that kind of person is a level of shaheed. وَالْغَرِقُ shaheed, The one who drowns is a shaheed. But the scholar said, not just anybody who drowns. يعني it's not someone who was on a jet ski with a female companion. He drowned. Oh, shaheed. لا, he's not a shaheed. But anyone who was doing something that was not haram, that was obedience and they had righteousness, they drown, we say that they're a shaheed, insha'Allah. وَصَاحِبُ ذَاتِ الْجَنْبِ shaheed. Okay, so that this is the, refers to an illness known as pleurisy, and it's a pain from the side, and also an inflammation in, in the membrane between the two lungs, and it causes pain in the chest. Someone who dies from that dies a shaheed as well. Not only that, the Prophet ﷺ said, وَالْمَبْطُونُ شَهِيد وَالْمَبْطُونُ يعني someone who dies from anything in the stomach, any stomach disease. And the scholars, other scholars even said anything in the abdomen in general, including liver. Some scholars say even someone dying from some kind of liver disease is a level of shaheed. And others say anything related to the stomach or to the bowel. Some of the classical scholars specifically mentioned when, and when someone's stomach is running and they die as a result of that or dehydration or dropsy, or any pain in the stomach, that person is a shaheed. وَصَاحِبُ الْحَرِيقِ shaheed, The one who was burned to death. يعني, he dies from the fire, he is a shaheed. Not someone who got burned and then 20 years later died, but bar died from the fire. The one, uh, and then from that, look at the mercy in Islam. They said from that, even the firefighter, if he dies in the fire, would be considered uh, from a, sh uh, a shaheed. Because he died in the fire and he died while trying to protect and assist fellow Muslims or others. Uh, then the Prophet ﷺ said that anyone who dies beneath a collapsed building. So we're seeing different levels for the shuhada of Palestine right now. People dying underneath a collapsed building, that is someone who dies a shaheed. And from there, look at the mercy of Islam. The scholar said, even someone who dies in a car crash, he rolled over because essentially the car collapsed upon them. They died in a car crash, the, the, the car rolled over, or 
uh, they, so they're saying they could get that level of shahada, provided they weren't racing or speeding or drifting or doing these things that youth do. That way, you're just risking your life. Subha- uh, he's risking your life. Then they even mention the the plane crash, but unfortunately, yani, we have to say this now in our world, yani, the you don't cause the plane to crash. You cause the plane to crash, you'll be in the hellfire. But any of these things they said, as long as you're not in a state where you are drunk or doing something haram, you die any of these deaths, you can become a shaheed. And the last one mentioned in this particular hadith, وَالْمَرْأَةُ تَمُوتُ بِجُمْعٍ شَهِيدَةٌ بِجُمْعٍ What does that mean? That a woman dies in pregnancy. So if she dies in her pregnancy, she is a martyr, she is a shahida. Then we have another hadith, which we'll skip for brevity of time, where the Prophet ﷺ says, even if she dies, so not only if she dies pregnant, if she dies while delivering, during delivery, and if she dies, what if she dies 15 days later, after giving birth? The had this other narration mentions, even in the, the postnatal or the postpartum period, yani during the nufasa, during that period, any time she dies within that period, she's also a martyr with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is from the mercy of Allah Azza wa from the mercy of Islam. And the scholars mention, obviously, this is a halal pregnancy. And unfortunately, you have to say that these days. Other hadith mention someone who is killed and stung by a venomous animal or an insect dies a shaheed. Someone who is killed by a predatory animal, and that's not an easy death. And to be attacked while you're alive and conscious by a lion or by some predatory animal until it kills you. If you fall off your riding animal and you fall off a camel and you die, you're a shaheed. A traveler that dies alone in a foreign land is a shaheed. Someone who dies at sea is a shaheed. Someone who t- falls from the top of a mountain, and in our times that would be from the top of a building, and it dies a falling death, will be a shaheed. And again, the scholars say, provided it's not, they were making some YouTube video where they're jumping from one building to another, risking their life, that's not a shaheed. Imam al-Nawawi says, all of these, they have difficulty in them. They're difficult deaths, and that's why those people attain the level of shahada or martyrdom. Likewise, in another hadith, the Prophet ﷺ says, if you die, man mata, uh, man mata duna malihi fahuwa shaheed. Whoever dies defending his wealth is a shaheed. Whoever dies defending himself. If you're defending yourself and you're killed, you're a shaheed. Whoever dies protecting his family, whoever dies because of religion, because he was killed or she was killed because she was Muslim. And we know that happened recently here in the area of Dallas where uh, a, a woman was stabbed to death. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept her as a martyr. So you're killed because of your religion. You're killed while spreading your religion. You die a shaheed. And that's why, as we all know, the family of Yasir, they were from the first of the shuhada in Islam. So the idea is that we understand the virtues. What happens to the soul of the shaheed? What happens to them on the day of judgment? Because we hear the shuhada of Palestine, the shuhada of Gaza. Let's understand all, or just some of the great blessings that they achieve. And perhaps, since we, many of us, feel unable to do anything and feel helpless, at least that might ease our hearts a little bit, knowing what they achieved, bi Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his forgiveness. Indeed, those who ask for his forgiveness shall prosper. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulihi al-ameen Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een Amma ba'd So part of the proper language in the adab is that we don't guarantee al-jannah nor al-shahada for any particular individual Meaning it's fine to say the shuhada of Gaza, the shuhada of Palestine, the shuhada of any battle or conflict but you don't specifically say this person is a shaheed or guarantee them. Just part of the adab with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that you don't 
speak as if you're guaranteeing the shahada. We, even though historically there were people who were known as a shaheed fulan, the shaheed so and so, meaning we hope they're not trying to say we're guaranteeing a shahada for them. And uh, the Prophet ﷺ said in a hadith, and this is Sahih al-Bukhari, Imam al-Bukhari, rahimahullah, he named the chapter, it cannot be said that so-and-so is a martyr. And he guaranteed that this person is a martyr. And he mentions that the Prophet ﷺ says, Allah knows best who was wounded for his sake. And Allah knows people's heart, and he knows who is truly sincere and who is truly uh, a shaheed. In another hadith, the Prophet ﷺ was at the burial of a young child. A young child died. And our mother Aisha radiallahu anha, she said, Ya Rasulullah, glad tidings for this boy. And good for him. One of the little birds of paradise. He did not do any evil or even reach the age of doing evil. And the Prophet told her, it may be otherwise. He's not speaking about the boy. He's telling her that we don't speak this way guaranteeing for anybody even if it's a child we don't speak just and even out of adab you don't confirm for sure what Allah did not confirm to you so that from that then there's something else that's important you can die a shaheed in your bed and those are the words of the Prophet ﷺ whoever asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in being truthful with sincerity. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will have him attain the level of the martyrs even if he dies in his bed because he asked for it sincerely. And, and another narration mentions whoever asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he be killed, meaning in the path of Allah, while he is truthful, then he just dies naturally. He doesn't get to go out to battle. He dies naturally or he is killed by someone else, not in battle. فَإِنَّ لَهُ أَجْرَ شَهِيدٍ He gets the reward of a shaheed. We have the story of the companion Haritha ibn Suraqa and he was hit by a stray arrow and his mother heard that he was just killed by a stray arrow. He wasn't even in the battlefield. So she came to the Prophet ﷺ and she said, Is he in al Jannah? Because if he is, I'll be patient. If he's not in al Jannah, you'll see what I'll do. This is before it was forbidden to wail and, and cry excessively. So the Prophet ﷺ tells her, Ya Umma Haritha, Innaha jinanun fil Jannah. He tells her, It's multiple levels of Jannah, Jinan, of paradise. It's not just one, it's multiple levels. Wa in abnaki. أصاب الفردوس الأعلى and your son has attained الفردوس الأعلى and so Haritha wasn't even in the battlefield and this is just a stray arrow that came and it killed him and he is in the highest levels of Al-Jannah because people might be asking what about those who were just killed what about those who were as we as we call it today in a political correct sense the um, what do they call it collateral damage all right so, the, even those people, they get that level bi'ithnillah azza wa jal. The last thing, it's ridiculous that we are now living at a time where we even have to mention this. All these shahada, all these levels of shahada, for, and you would imagine, I wouldn't have to say this, but it's for the Muslims only. For the Muslims only. But you find, quote-unquote, shifts now on the internet, and they're saying, the ayah didn't specify. And it says whoever dies like this is a shaheed. So anybody, no matter what religion, if they die drowning or in a fire or kida, they're in a shaheed. And they will be, they even said they will be in al-jannah. No, they won't. No, they won't. This is for the Muslims and all these hadith are speaking about the believers. Speaking about the believers who believe in Allah Azza wa Jal. These are the ones who will be from the shuhada. With that, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who recognize the truth as clear truth and follow the best of it. And we ask Him to make us of those who recognize falsehood as clear falsehood and abstain from it. فَاللَّهُمَّ أَرِنَ الْحَقَّ حَقًّا وَارْزُقْنَ اتِّبَاعَهُ وَأَرِنَ الْبَاطِلَ بَاطِلًا وَارْزُقْنَ اتِّنَابَهُ اللَّهُمَّ لَا تَجْعَلَ الدُّنْيَا أَكْبَرَ حَمِّنَا وَلَا مَبْلَغَ عِلْمِنَا وَلَا إِلَى النَّارِ مَصِيرَنَا
اللهم انصر اخواننا في فلسطين اللهم انصر اخواننا في فلسطين اللهم احقن دماءهم اللهم ارحمهم وتقبل شهداءهم اللهم احفظ ارواحهم واحفظ نساءهم واولادهم اللهم ثبتهم يا رب العالمين اللهم ثبتهم يا رب العالمين وثبت الارض من تحت اقدامهم اللهم ارفع عنهم البلاء وقوهم يا رب العالمين اللهم ارفع عنهم البلاء وقوهم يا رب العالمين اللهم كن لهم عونا ونصيرا اللهم كن لهم عونا ونصيرا اللهم ابرم لهذه الامه امر رشد يعز فيه اهل طاعتك ويهدى فيه اهل معصيتك ويؤمر فيه بالمعروف وينهى فيه عن المنكر يا سميع الدعاء وصل اللهم وبارك على مبعوث رحمه للعالمين وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين وقوموا الى صلاتكم يرحمكم الله